Okay. Um, so I think before I dive into this other example, I did want to mention that when you're finding interval convergence, there are sort of three options. There are, there are three ways that these power series can converge. Um, and, and I'm going to cover those. Though. I'm going to just give you an overview of those three things now. One thing that can happen is it can converge only at the center, right? So if it converges only at the center, what would the interval of convergence look like? Now, the interval of convergence is really boring. It's going to be, you know, just x equals 3 or x equals 2 or x equals negative, whatever the, whatever the center was, there isn't really an interval to speak of, it's just going to be that center, right? In those cases, what is the radius of convergence, right? Well, the radius of convergence, if you think about it, it's sort of, remember we, we talked in the previous video about like, if you were to write down an interval of, you know, what, how, how wide is the, the, the region that's converging? In this case, it's converging for one single solitary value. When that happens, the radius of convergence is zero because it's only converging at the center, right? It's like, imagine, like, here's your number line, and it converges only at three, right? I can't say, oh, yeah, it converges one in both directions or two in both directions. It's only happening at that center, and so the radius is zero, right? Um, so that's the first thing that can happen. It can converge only at the center. The next thing that can happen is it can converge for all values of x. And I think that was actually what we saw in the first example in, in the B video, right? So what does the interval look like for that one? Well, it converges for all values of x. You say it's from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? And similarly, what's the radius of convergence? Well, it's sort of like, imagine your number line. Let's say the center was 5. If it converges for all values of x, we would say that that has an infinite radius of convergence, right? Um, so the radius of convergence could be zero if it's at, only at the center. It could be infinite if it's for all values of x. And the last thing is that there could be a legitimate interval, right? So I guess a, I suppose I should call it a finite non-trivial interval. Um, and, and this one is, like, I don't know that I can really write you much of an example of it. In these cases, you're going to get something like, oh, it converges between negative 1 and 3, you know, or maybe it converges between 2 and 4. And in these cases, you have to compute them individually, right? For the top one, the distance between 3 and 1 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, so the radius would be 2. In the second example, um, I go from 4 to 2, that's a, that's a distance of 2. 2 divided by 2 to get the radius sense is 1. So those are the three things that can happen in terms of these intervals of convergence and radius of convergence. If you'd like to see one more example of finding an interval of convergence, I'm going to do that next. Find the radius and interval of convergence of this power series. Um, so first step, we pick a test. Um, I see nth powers, which means I'm going to be thinking ratio test. I'm sorry, not ratio test, root test. Um, so here we go with the root test. Right. For the root test, I'm supposed to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of this thing. Um, and, and in a number of cases, this works out really nicely. That nth root is going to cancel with that and with that. And with this, it's going to leave me, um, I'll, I'll sort of have to deal with that individually. So I'm going to have um, the absolute value of x plus 5 over the nth root of n times 3. And remember, for the root test, this has to be less than 1 in order to converge. Right? So now hopefully you remember that we memorized the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of n is 1. So when this is all said and done, I just have x plus 5 over 3 has to be less than 1. Now just like we said in the previous video, once you get to this point, you sort of say, okay, that, that means this central thing has to be sandwiched between negative 1 
and positive 1, right? Next, if I multiply everything by 3, that gets me this. And then if I subtract 5, I'll end up with negative 8 is less than x is less than negative 2. <clears throat> now remember, this is not the finished interval of convergence. Remember, what do you have to do before you get the final interval of convergence? What we need to do is we need to test these endpoints. But before I do that, I do want to mention, at this point, it's easy to find the radius. Right? At this one, I can say, well, how far is it between, you know, from negative 8 to negative 2 is 6 units, right? And so that means the radius of convergence is 3. So if a problem is only asking for the radius, you don't need to test the endpoints. All you have to do is find out what the interval is, and then sort of find the total distance, divide by 2, and that'll give you the radius of convergence. Um, but to finish the problem, to find the actual interval, interval of convergence, we have to test those values, right? So I'm going to test x equals negative 8, and I'm going to test x equals negative 2. That was a terrible 8, but we'll have to deal with it. Um, so in order to do this, I need to look at my original series. So my original series, I hope I remember this right, was from 0 to infinity, and it was x plus 5 to the nth over, uh, it was n times 3 to the n, right? So take a look at this. What happens when I plug in negative 8 to that original series? When I do that, I end up with the sum on 0 to infinity of negative 3 to the nth over... Uh, whoops, over n times 3 to the nth power. Now, I'd love to cancel the negative 3 to the nth and the 3 to the nth, but I can't because one of them is negative. So remember that trick that I showed you in the last one? You can sort of split the negative 3 to the nth into two pieces, negative 1 to the n and 3 to the n. When I do that, these cancel out, and I'm left with the sum from 0 to infinity, of negative 1 to the n over n. And the question all along is, does this, like, subseries, does this series actually converge? And the answer is that it does. It's an alternating series, right? Because it alternates on the top, because the terms are getting smaller, because they turn into 0. I don't have time to go into all of it right now, but I hope you remember, because of the alternating series test, this converges. Which is exciting, right? Um, so hold that in mind. Let's go back and look at the other half of this thing. What about when x is negative 2? When x is negative 2, I plug in negative 2. I get the sum on n equals 0 to infinity of, let's see here, plugging ne negative 2 into this is going to give me 3 to the n. So this one's 3 to the n over n times 3 to the n. 3 to the n's cancel. I'm left with a sum 0 to infinity of 1 over n. And again, the question, does this converge or diverge? Well, this is either a p-series or harmonic, however you want to see it. This is a divergent, a divergent p-series, mostly because p is 1. So what does that mean when we're almost done? What does that mean about our interval, interval, of convergence. Well, we knew before that our interval of convergence was between negative 8 and negative 2, I think. Let me double check those. Yep. It was between negative 8 and negative 2. We found that it converges when you plug in negative 8. So I'm going to change this less than symbol to less than or equal to. And it diverges when it's 2, so I'm going to leave this one here. If I wanted to write this in interval notation, I would write it like this. The bracket means that you include negative 8. That's a closed interval. The parentheses is an open interval, meaning you don't include negative 2. Um, so that's that. That's how we find interval and radius of convergence. I hope you guys are able to get through the assignment well uh, tonight or tomorrow or whenever you end up doing that. So have a good one, and I'll see you soon.